see everybody there, and those go all the way up, Dave. Man. Yeah. Now they can see me. I can't see you, but they can see me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, our brothers are going to uh, come forward with the offering envelopes today. Today is Mission Sunday also, <coughs> so they'll be asking you if you need just your regular tithe and offerings or uh, missions or both. Please um, get them both ready and we'll receive them today. Brothers, if you would come forward, if you need an envelope, raise your hand. While they're doing that, I'd like to remind everybody that the Lord tells us that we are to bring the whole tithe and offering into the storehouse. Yeah. In Malachi chapter 3, verses 10 through 12. But he says, if you will do that. I always like when God says, if you, there's a part that says, I will. And he says, if you will bring the whole tithe and offering into the storehouse, I will pour out a blessing. And he says, not only that, but this one place, he says, you can test me in this and see if I won't open the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing you can't even hold. Amen. And then he goes beyond that and he says, you know, I recognize pestilence, locusts, all sorts of things come along and they ruin your crops. But he says, I'll rebuke the devourer yeah. on your behalf. Amen. Amen. That means stuff, our stuff won't wear out like the world's Glory. does. Amen. Yes. You know, you can see the world, <laughs> ladies, if you remember what this is, you can see your neighbor buy three flat irons while you only have to purchase one. <laughs> Uh huh. Nobody knew what I was talking yeah. about. Huh? Okay. <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about. The Lord is so good. He says, I'll see that your stuff lasts. Amen. But bring the whole tithe and offering into the storehouse. To anyone who's watching on television or on your computer or any other means, if you would like to send an offering, it goes to Life in Christ Fellowship, Post Office Box 820. Eager, Arizona. Eager is spelled E-A-G-A-R and 85925. We just bless you, Lord, and we thank you. Yes. That, Lord, as we bring the whole tithe and offering, that, Lord, you will open those floodgates and pour out a blessing we can't even hold. Yes. And you will rebuke the devourer on our behalf. And you also said, Father, if we would give, men would give back to us good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Lord, <coughs> in this time of trial and tribulation that we've been going through, there are many that are looking for the promises of God. But Lord, the ones that are seeing it are those who have been operating in the financial realm of the word not the financial realm of the world. So I just ask you today, Lord, see that it's given back, good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Yes. And Father, I, I lift up all of our missionaries that, Lord, we support, Micaiah Ministries, uh, mostly in Russia, but throughout the United States. Jacob and Betsy Smith in Thailand. Pierre and Elizabeth, all throughout the world, Father. And Tony and Ornus Sporendio with Kafar Saba in Israel, in Ha, Maya congregation. We just thank you, Lord, that as we can support them, they can reach out to people we will never see. Lord, I, I've been to places I never thought I'd make, but I just have my doubts that Thailand or China or Cambodia or any of those places over there will be a place I'll set my foot, but I thank you for Jacob and Betsy being there. Amen. I doubt I'll ever see Russia, but I thank you for Micaiah Ministries yes. being there. Yes. So many places that Pierre and Elizabeth go where the unreached people groups are. They're unreached because nobody goes there, but Pierre and Elizabeth do. We just thank you for them. And Tony and Orna and, and Kafar Saba Israel, Lord, reaching out to anyone who will come into the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I just ask you to bless each one. And Father, as we are giving today, 
Lord, I ask you to bless it and may each of the missionaries find that that money goes further than they ever thought possible. And then, Lord, bless it back to each one as they give. And we just give you all glory and honor in Jesus' sweet name. Amen. 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 If you would, brothers, receive the tithes and offerings and the missions offering together. And if you would take your Bibles and hold them up with me, we're going to give our proclamation. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. It is the inspired Word of God. It is the inspired Word of God. I can do what it says I can do. And I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. And I can have what it says I can have. I can be what it says I can be. I can be what it says I can be. And I am what it says I am. I am what it says I am. And the Word of God says that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I will not allow the world, the devil, or myself to argue me out of it. I will not allow the world, the devil, or myself to argue me out of it. But I will allow the word of God. But I will allow the word of God. To touch deep in my heart today. To touch deep in my heart today. To mold me and make me more like Jesus. To mold me and make me more like Jesus. In whose sweet name I pray. In whose sweet name I pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. If you would turn with me to Psalms. 73 verse 28. I want to show it to you in two ways this morning. First in the NIV, where it says, But as for me, it is good to be near God. I mean, that's just a, a beautiful statement. Yes. It's just good yes. to be near God. Yes. Amen. And I'd like to add, and it's good to be near God. God's people. Amen. It is so wonderful to see so many of you here this morning. God bless you. He goes on. I have made the sovereign Lord my refuge. I will tell of all your deeds. <clears throat> so as the psalmist is doing this, he's making some proclamations to the Lord. But I, I'd like to look at it in the New King James Version. And I'll be ministering out of the New King James in this verse today. But it is good for me to draw near to God. Yes, it is good for us to draw near to God. Amen. There is no doubt about it. When God says, come near to me, we need to get near to him. To climb right up in his lap. Amen. To Amen. put our arms around his neck. Yes. Nuzzle our nose into his <laughs> neck and his cheek and say, Daddy, I love you. And I want to be closer to you. Amen. I want to know what you want me to do and what you want me to say, where you want me to go. I want to just do whatever you want me to do. And we have to be close to him to do that. He goes on. I have put my trust in in the Lord God. How important is that? If we don't trust, we won't walk. I mean, it's just that simple. If we won't trust, we won't go where God tells us to go. And it's a learning operation to get to that point. I remember when the Lord called Pastor Joe and I to Greer. I looked at Greer and said, Lord, do you realize there's only 73 people there in the wintertime? And that's counting the dogs, cats, and I think the mice that they might catch. How about Pine Top Lakeside? There's more people over there, Lord. Greer, huh? How, how about Sholo? Now, that's even a bigger place where we could start a church and have some people come to it. Had to trust God. That he knew what he was saying. Yep. And so we went to Greer and Amen. started it there. And we've been here now for 40, 37 years. 37 years. I was, it seems long at times, folks. <laughs> <laughs> but I have put my trust in the Lord God. Man will fail you. I don't care who he or she is, humankind will fail you. 
And then he ends with this statement, that I may declare all of your works. Now, in Sunday school this morning, Pastor Joe said we're all called to preach right there. Mm -hmm. We all have an opportunity to declare all of God's works. Mm -hmm. And we just need to recognize that we have that availability. Now, this is a psalm that King David did not write. This is a psalm of Asaph, okay? Now, Asaph was a Levite of the Barachia clan of the Gergashanites, or however you want to say it. <laughs> Asaph sounded the cymbals before the Ark of the Covenant when it was moved from the house of Obed-Edom to Jerusalem. Remember, they were moving the Ark to Jerusalem, and uh, it started to tip. Somebody touched it, and they died. So they put the Ark in Obed-Edom's house for a while. Okay, But when they took it from Obed-Edom's up to Jerusalem, after David and the priest went to find out, why did somebody die? What happened? So they went and found how to move the Ark of the Covenant. And when they came back to move it into Jerusalem, Asaph and his family were the ones who were playing the cymbals before the Ark of the, house, or Ark of the Covenant as it went to Jerusalem. Asaph's family became one of the three families given responsibility for music and song in the temple when they got to Jerusalem and set up the temple there. Following the captivity where they came back to Jerusalem, 128 members of this family returned from Babylon and conducted the singing when the foundations of Zerubbabel's temple were laid. This is a man who has had some experience. 12 songs. Psalms 50, Psalms 73 through 83 are all attributed to the family of Asaph. And you can go and find this out. I, I have all of the, the references to it, but uh, I got those from Thomas Nelson Illustrated Bible, and there's so much information there. But I'd like to look at the three <coughs> basic sentences that Asaph said. Number one, but it is good for me to draw near to God. Had Asaph drawn near to God at first, he probably wouldn't have gotten into all the situations that got him into such trouble in the first place. But when he did draw near, he escaped from his dilemma, and when he continued to do so to draw near to God, he did not fall into the evil, same evil again. How about us? Do we learn from our mistakes? Most of us mm -hmm. don't. <laughs> At least not the first time. Right. Sometimes the second. Generally the third, fourth, or fifth time, we finally get it straight in our head. Oh, this isn't what God wants me to do. And we stop doing it. <laughs> we must recognize that the greater nearness we have to God, the less we are affected by the pullings of the world and the devil. It just doesn't have the effect on us when we're wrapped up in the arms of God. We got our hands around our daddy's neck and we're whispering sweet nothings in his ears. All the attraction of the world just fades away. Amen. Yeah. It sure does. Pastor Joe and I were watching a movie last night in which a couple finally kissed. They realized they were in love. And at the instant that happened, on the TV set in the restaurant they were in, the winning touchdown was made. And these were all from that team's area. So there was an uproar in the restaurant. Yay! All this. And this couple's just wrapped in each other's arms. They could care less mm -hmm. what was going on around about them. God wants us Amen. to put our arms around his neck Amen. so that we're not looking at what the world or the devil has to offer. But getting into his word yes. to find out what he wants yes. and what he's promised yes. to us. Amen. Do you know every promise in the Bible is ours? Mm -hmm. From Genesis to the last book of Revelation, every promise belongs to us. Amen. if we'll walk in it. But you know, 
we don't know what it means if we haven't studied the word. If we don't trust the word. Now, you find certain trusts in young people. Like my great grandson. He's sitting right there. And I'll bet if I told him that Papa had a dollar for him if he'd get up here, it wouldn't take him long to get up here. Do you think it would? I have a dollar for you if you'll come and get Ooh. it. <laughs> Say thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> now he's special. Yes, he is. But he ain't all that special. Because <laughs> I got a dollar for Cadence if she wants to come up. Because this is my great granddaughter. Yeah, I made her work for it. They're special. They're my grandkids, great grandkids, excuse me. I am the great grandpapa. <laughs> okay. I have another dollar if another little girl would like to come up here. Uh -huh. All right, Bella. Hey. Uh -huh. hey Bella. You got a pool in on you. There you go. Thank you. Those are my grandkids. <laughs> Okay, but there's a couple of other young people that are pretty special here too, and I don't know their names, but I'll guarantee Amy, you. Amy, Marie, Amy, and Hank. I've got a dollar for you, sweetheart, if you want to come and get it. <laughs> All the kids get a dollar. There you go. Thank you. Come on, Nancy. <laughs> this one's big enough to argue with you. <laughs> There you go. God bless you. Now, see, they had to trust to walk up here. <laughs> Sit down, Harris. He's a big kid. I didn't have a 20. <laughs> but you know, that's what we call trust. That if you say something, mm -hmm. you'll do it. Yes. Now, I looked and counted children and re recollected what I had put in my pocket, <laughs> and I was sure I had either four or six ones. And as I was praying, I had <laughs> five. <laughs> and I was lucky, I got six, okay? <laughs> Nobody else is getting a dollar, don't worry about it, okay? Don't pray for a 50. <laughs> <laughs> I can pray for one if somebody wants to give it to me. <laughs> But recognizing <laughs> that we have to know what we're saying, that we can do what we say we can do. Now, how would it have been if I'd only had $3 in my pocket mm -hmm. and there were two youngsters that got nothing? Mm -hmm. They would have said, eh. yeah. well, you know, we've got to know the word of God and trust him that when he says, bring in the whole tithe and offering into the storehouse and see if I won't open yes. the floodgates of heaven yes. and pour out a blessing you yes. can't even hold. That he knows what he's talking about. He's already calculated his bank account and he's ready to give it to you. Amen. I mean, that's, that's what God's word is calling us to, that it is good for us to draw near to God, that we have access to, to the holy place, yes. which is in God's arms, yes. which is a great place to be and Amen. a great privilege to be called to come to that place. Amen. It is good for you and me and all the saints, and it's particularly good for me. All the time, it's particularly, you know, you can do the same thing. Yeah. You point that finger right here. You say, that's good yeah. for, for me, me. Yeah. to draw yeah. close yeah. to God. Yeah. Okay? Because he is the source of all good that's going to come into our life. We'll just walk Amen. with him. God himself. Now, the second statement that Asaph said was, I have put my trust in the Lord God. Now, Asaph dwells upon the glorious name of the Lord Jehovah. He's thinking about it. And he declares it as the basis of his faith. 
I know who my God is, mm -hmm. and I believe that he knows what he's talking about, and I believe he can do anything he says he can do. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I am going to act upon it. That's where he's gotten himself to. He recognizes that faith in God is wisdom. And we all need wisdom, can we say amen? amen. amen. Wisdom is the key to the puzzles of life. Being able to go into the throne room of God and say, God, Daddy, I don't understand. And he pats you on the head and says, I know, I know, I understand. I saw a thing, I, 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 somebody in here posted it up on Facebook yesterday. It was a little statement, Dear God, and a whole bunch of letters, and signed by mm -hmm. whoever. And oh, the jumble of letters made no sense. And then the next frame says, Dear whoever it was, I know, love God. So even when we don't understand what's going on, God does. Yes. And he's ready to move in our behalf if we'll yeah. just trust him. Yeah. There's no question that we can ask him he doesn't have an answer to. Amen. All the riddles of life, he knows the answer to. All the clues that we need to get through the maze that we call living. I don't know about you, but I, I have gone down some dead-end paths in my life. I had to turn around and backtrack. Mm -hmm. That's called a maze, trying to find your way through. You know with God, it's a whole lot easier. Amen. You get to that intersection, and he knows which way you should go. And if we'll listen, he'll tell us. Yeah. But we have to listen to him. We've got to know what's going on. As a sailor, the old story is, you can get out in the middle of the ocean. How do you find the highway from here to there? You look at the stars. You know, God put them there, and he knows where they're at, and he knows and has taught us how to use them to go when we have no path. Let's just walk with God, trust him, trust him, and you will know the answer. Now, I have a, a real quick little short telling you how not to trust in God. Uncle Oscar was apprehensive about his first airplane ride. His friends, eager to hear how it went, asked him if he enjoyed the flight. Well, commented Uncle Oscar, it wasn't as bad as I thought it might be, but I'll tell you this, I never did put all my weight down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know how you sit on a fragile chair and you don't put all your weight on it till you Settle little by little by little. You get on an airplane, all your weight's on it. I don't care how you sit on the seat. Okay? <laughs> we got to trust God to just walk up and get on the yeah. plane and go with him. And the third part of that statement was that I may declare all thy works. He who believes in God shall understand. Asaph, if you'll read his, what he wrote in the psalm, he doesn't speak evil real easy. But boy, he is ready to shout out the good things of God. And we need to be there too. Because God's ways are always the right way. And if we will recognize that he is our God, he is our leader, he is our Lord, and we start looking for Number one, into his word. Number two, into our life. Number three, the lives of people around us. And we know of the, of the good things that he's done. We can talk forever and not run out of things to share with the world out there that's looking for some meaning to life right now. Yeah. Is this all there is to life? Are we all going to die of coronavirus? No. No, we're not. At least not God's people aren't. Now, is that saying some of God's people aren't going out to die in this? I'm sure some already have. Yes, sir. We've got to be careful. We've got to be aware. But we do not have to walk in fear. Yes, no, that's right. I saw another one the other yesterday. I believe the guy said, I'm, wearing, I'm putting on a mask to stop the coronavirus. 
And the next one was, and I'm putting up a chain link fence to keep out the mosquitoes. <laughs> <laughs> One's about as effective as the other. Okay? So we, but, you know, to just say, oh, well, I'm just going to go any place and everybody can cough and sneeze and whack, hack around me and I'm not, you know, I'll just breathe it up. No, that's not the way to go. We need to use wisdom. And we get that from God. But we shall never have to be silent for a lack of wonders of God to declare. How many of you, raise your hand, if you've ever held a baby wild turkey in your hands? I've done that. I held a baby wild turkey in my hand. Mama went, oh! And all of her babies just fell flat. But I happened to just see where one was. And I went over and picked it up. And it was the cutest little thing. And it, it already had its feathers coming in and everything. Mama was not real thrilled with me. <laughs> okay? She, she didn't really care about Pastor Joe, who was standing about 10 feet from me. But Mama was not real thrilled with me. So she, she wanted me to attack her, so she flopped one wing and ran around me to distract me from the baby. It didn't work. So then she decided that maybe she could limp and flap a wing at the same time and I'd go after her. It didn't work. So then she thought, well, maybe rushing me close <laughs> would work. It didn't. Then she decided if she ran into me, that might work. It did before she got to me. I saw her coming. And I put the baby down. And the baby flopped on the ground. And Mama, and they all got up. And they all followed her off at high speed. But, I mean, the wonder. Can you imagine holding a wild baby turkey in your hand? The wonders that God has placed before us. Some of you know the joy of holding a newborn human baby in your arms. Mm -hmm. What a wonder. Yes. What a wonder that is. Yes. We were at the hospital visiting a lady having a baby. And we won't mention any names, but the baby was a little slippery as it exited mama. And the doctor dropped it in the trash can at first. <laughs> but that's okay. It was full of other stuff already in there that kind of cushioned it as it, as it fell in head first. But everybody in the room went, <gasps> and Mama said, what's the matter? And we all went, nothing. <laughs> nothing. Everything's just fine. <laughs> and so the doctor picks the baby up, and he starts handing it around to everybody in the room. I've held a newborn baby that wasn't two minutes old. What a wonder. Get away, turkey. Let me have that little baby. Okay? What a wonder it was. We passed that baby all over the place. And the nurse came in and said, oh, I've got to go take the baby now and clean it and do all this. Brought it back in. They wouldn't let us touch it. <laughs> no, the baby's clean. What a wonder. There's things that we can talk about that we've all been through that are wonders of God. Yes, yes. I've shared with you before. I walked into this place and I looked across the room and I saw this girl sitting there. And I told my buddy, I said, see that girl over there? She was as far as from me as, as Dave was, is from me right now, Dave Elliott. 100 feet. And I said, you see that girl over there? And he, he looked and said, yeah. I said, if I ever met her, I could fall in love with her and marry her. There she is right there. <laughs> 51 years later, she's still just as beautiful in my eyes as she was those many years ago. What a wonder that God can give you a mate for 51 years. And who are we just seeing with marriage 70? 74. President, Carter and President Carter and his wife. 73 years. 73 years. They may make it to 75. Yeah. 
Can you imagine? What a wonder that those two have to have living that long together. God, the works of God, we can marvel at. We had our grandchildren, not these, but other grandchildren, up at Green's Peak one night when the meteor shower came through. Mm. Oh, man, you could, you could see the flash, and they, you, it was like you could hear the whooshing. As it, and I don't know what it was, but we're out there watching that. I mean, what a wonder to see all this happening. And then the 4th of July came about a week later, and we went to the fireworks, and the kids said, God does a better job. <laughs> a wonder. A wonder. Yeah. I think it was Russell that put up on yesterday that the moon taught him something. Is that you, Russell, that put that up? Somebody did. Said the moon taught him something. It's okay to be in phases, to go in phases. But the sun also taught him something. It's okay to come up every morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whoever put that up, there's, there's more to it than what they think. If we recognize God. Yeah. You know, do you realize, science class 101, do you realize we're not stationary in the universe? We are moving through space. Mm -hmm. Everything's moving through space. Mm -hmm. That's science class 101. But you know the stars are still relative to us and they've been there for what we know of five, six thousand years mm -hmm. and they're still basically in the same place mm -hmm. that we, we can navigate by the stars. On the submarine I was on, we had three ships inertial navigation systems. We call them SINS unit. S-I-N-S. Ships Inertial Navigation, or S-I-N, plural, SINs. They were a navigation. We could put in exactly where we left. Every place we went, every move we made was recorded by that SINs unit. And at any time, you could go ask it where you are, and it would tell you approximately where you were. <laughs> so you know what we did to find out where we were? At least once a, a week, we went up and the captain shot the stars to find out where we were, and we corrected the ship's inertial navigation system. God is so accurate. Yeah. If we'll just believe him, yeah. if we'll just walk with him, what a wonder it is. Yes, yes. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 22 says this. Let us... Draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith. Now that word means unwavering confidence. A fullness of faith in God which leaves no room for doubt. Christians are asked to come this way because God has revealed himself through the Redeemer as in every way deserving of our fullest confidence. There is more evidence for Jesus Christ him dying on the cross, being put in a tomb, and coming out of that tomb alive. There's more evidence for that than many of what we call ancient peoples that we believe in and we rely on them. Aristotle and people like that. Do you realize there's so much evidence we can believe God? So when we approach God, we must approach him in an acceptable manner that says, I am fully aware, God, of who you are and what you can do, and I believe you're going to do it. I mean, what parent would feel that a child came properly to them to ask a favor if the child doesn't believe and have confidence in that parent that they can or will do what they've said. Yeah. We, we don't, we had a rule. If you come to us and say, I know you're going to say no, but no. you didn't have to finish. <laughs> the answer was no, I don't care what it was. Yeah. They finally got a confidence. And they came and said, we want to do so and so. 
we may have still said no, but at least they came with a confidence that they could ask. It's just we must raise our children that way. We need to be so free in our consciences. Pastor Joe said this morning in Sunday school, it's not always a pastor's job to preach and make you feel good, but to tell you the truth. Yes. I'm telling you right now, this may not make you feel good, but we need to have our consciences so clean that we can walk up into Daddy's arms yes. knowing that he knows that we can say, I love you with all my heart. That's just where we need to be. We do not have to need a cleansing from the guilt of our sins. We just need to hang on to him and always walk with him. Verse 23 of, of Hebrews 10 says, Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. Yes. God is faithful. Yes. Do you know, after church today, we're having a pot blessing? Mm -hmm. Why did you bring food this morning? You believed us two weeks ago when we said we're going to have a pot blessing. Yeah. So you believed it. Well, you know, God says, if you do this, I'll do this. We said, if you bring food, we'll eat it. <laughs> oh. Each one of us said that to everybody else in the congregation, right? And if you didn't get the message, I sent it to you yesterday in a text. Okay. But we need to trust our God. We need to have every area of our life filled by him. Psalms 107, verse 20. says, he sent forth his word and healed them. Now, I praise God for all the doctors and the things they're doing during this time of the coronavirus, and the surgeons that have operated on me and taken out bad parts, and thank God they haven't put any parts in, but they, and, you know, taken out bad parts. But, you know, we're not healed by medicine alone. Even a good surgeon will tell you, I'm not the healer. I just take out things and sew you back up. God has to heal you. Okay? So he is our healer. A word out of the mouth of God is all it takes. And we need to know that word is true. A word will do it. A word has done it thousands of times. And we can read some of them in our Bible. We can read of the miracles of God just saying something and it happening. So we need to allow Almighty God to rescue us from everything around us, yeah. including the grave. Amen. Because I'm coming out of, if I go into one, I'm coming out of that Amen. Amen. Okay? Amen. I'm coming out of it and I'm going to rejoin with my body and we're going to have a clashing in the air and we're going to meet Jesus and go back up to heaven with him. Yes. That's called a rapture, by the way. Yep. Not the second coming. The second coming, Jesus comes for his bride. The second coming, or the, the rapture, he comes for the bride. The second coming, he's ending the rule and the reign of the enemy. A little side lesson. Verse 21 of Psalms 107. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. Verse 22, let them sacrifice thank offerings and tell of his works with songs of joy. Amen. We're supposed to sing to our God. Amen. Yes. Sometimes it's better if we do it alone. <laughs> <laughs> but many times it's better if we all get together <laughs> and some sing louder than others. Okay? I won't tell you which part of that I'm in. Psalms 118, verse 17 says, I will not die, but live. Amen. When we can make that statement, I will not die, but live, Amen. we resolve to bear witness to the divine faithfulness of Almighty God. Yes. I will not die. I will not die. But he goes on. And will proclaim what the Lord has done. Amen. He's determined 
to tell of the works of God in his life. And he does so. When the psalmist, and, and this is the psalmist King David, when he tells in the psalms of so many of the things that God has done, where he dwells in the admir admiration of God. I mean, can't you just see King David? He is the voice. He is the law, so to speak. If he says you die, you die. If you live, you live. And he says, man, there is one so much greater than I. Yeah. That when they brought the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem, he went and danced like a buffoon before the, the throne. The highest voice in the land making himself nothing before the Ark of the Covenant because he recognized how great his God was. And he just wants to share with us. That's what psalms are. Psalms generally telling how great our God is. How great Jehovah is and what he does and how he'll do them. And in the midst of every situation, we can call out to God mm -hmm. and he's there. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we don't have to holler, hey God! We can simply say, oh God. Mm -hmm. Because though he fills the universe, he's right here. Oh, yes. He's that close. Mm -hmm. We can whisper mm -hmm. and we can talk with him. Pastor Joe and I like to say, we started talking 51 years ago, and we haven't stopped yet. <laughs> we still have three-hour conversations at 2 in the morning uh, or whatever, remembering all the great 51 years that we've had. Well, guess what? Our God deserves as much credit as we give each other. We need to learn what God has done and have it on our, on our lips so that we can praise him yes. when we have the opportunity. Amen. Do you know, some of these kids are probably going to go home today and they'll tell somebody. We were at church the other day and my papa said he'd give me a dollar if I'd come up and I went up and he gave me a dollar. And some kid's going to say, gee, I wish my papa would do that. Can I come to your church with you next week? <laughs> you thought I was a fool when I gave money away, didn't you? No, no, yeah. But don't you realize that that's that same confidence that we need to have with God that a child has with a grandparent? Yes. Let us go from here today and recognize that I have put my trust in the Lord God. Amen. That's what this whole sermon is about. I have put my trust in the Lord God. Amen. Who are you trusting? And so I would ask for all of those that are watching by media, have you trusted God? Have you asked Jesus to come into your life and to be the Lord and Savior of your life? See, I've only outlined some of the great things that God has done. But he's calling each and every one of us to come. He says, I stand at the door and knock. And I heard this the other day. It's so wonderful. I stand at the door and knock. And the evangelist asked the crowd, have you heard him knock? He wants you to open the door. Amen. And he says, well, where's the door? He said, don't worry about it. If you hear God knock, say, if that's you, Lord, break the door down. And he will. Amen. Amen? Yes. Every one of us can do that today. You've heard God knocking at your door. Just ask him to knock the door down. 
and come in. And I'm going to ask you right now, wherever you are, if that's you and you want to invite Jesus into your heart, I want you to say a very simple little prayer with me. Dear God in heaven, come into my heart. Forgive my sin. Jesus, you went to the cross for me. You went to the grave for me. So I'm asking you, God, I'm asking you, Jesus, come into my life. Be my Savior and be my Lord. And I'll follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' sweet name. If you did that, the word says you're in the family of God. And I ask you to drop me a line to Life in Christ Fellowship, Post Box 820, Eager, E-A-G-A-R, Arizona, 85925. You would make my day to hear that you've come into the kingdom of God and you're now walking with the Savior of the whole world. And you're part of the kingdom that's going to go and spend eternity with God in heaven. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And now to all of us that are here.